for this session, um, the magic session that we're going to have tonight. I welcome you and I thank you for coming to our magic show called Mind Over Matter. Mm -hmm. It is specifically designed for people who are 50 years old or older. So if that works, good. I'd like to start with, uh, with that in mind and, you know, loosening up a little bit. I'd like to start with a prayer, and it is called A Prayer for Those Growing Older, and that's all of us. Here goes. Dear Lord, Thou knowest I am growing older. Please keep me from becoming talkative and possessed with the idea that I must express myself on every subject. <laughs> Release, me. <laughs> Release me from the craving to straighten out everyone else's affairs. <laughs> Keep me from the recital of endless details. Give me wings to get to the point. Seal my lips when I am inclined to talk about my aches and pains. <laughs> they are increasing with the years, and my love to speak of them just grows sweeter as time goes by. Teach me the glorious lesson that, occasionally, I could be wrong. <laughs> Make me thoughtful, but not nosy. Helpful, but not bossy. With my vast store of wisdom, it does seem a pity not to use it all. But thou knowest, Lord, I do want a few friends in the end. <laughs> <laughs> beginning of the fun that we are going to have. Now we invited David, Co David, Coffer David Copperfield, but he could not be here today. So in his place, we have the second greatest magician. Let me introduce a little bit. He is a single father of two beautiful daughters, and he is the proud grandpa of Benjamin, his three-year-old grandson. He has attended the University of Wisconsin, University of Kentucky, Northern Kentucky University, and Ohio College of Applied Science. And he has a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration. For 35 years, he was a corporate manager in the telecommunications industry. He is a producer of the award-winning television program, some of you may still have be viewing it, called Entertainers in the Tri-State. And he's producer of the theatrical production called The Stars of Magic. He is a motivational speaker, an MC, and author of several books. He is an investor in real estate, ballroom dancer, entertainer, and of course, magician. Most importantly, he is my significant other. <laughs> Put your hands together and let's welcome the second greatest magician, Paul Pepper. Thank you, Jean. My name is Paul Ketterer, but many know me as the second greatest magician. And some of you may be wondering why the second greatest? The reason is quite simple. You see, there are thousands upon thousands of greatest magicians, but there's only one second greatest. However, maybe I should bill myself as the third greatest magician. Second to all of those thousands upon thousands of self-proclaimed greatest magicians, but they truly indeed are second to the one and true magician. And you know where I'm going with this. And that magician is God. Whichever God you choose to believe in, for your God's magic is real. Your God's magic transcends the magic of man. But the magic you will see tonight is nothing more than the quickness <laughs> of the hands or an illusion. So watch and listen as we enter the world of illusion. And in the world of illusion, we're never quite sure what is real and what is not. For example, ESP, mental telepathy, thought transference, or even a prediction. 
You know what I said, kid? I swear my mom had ESP. She did. I couldn't do anything wrong without getting caught. I know she had eyes in the back of her head. And then she would give me the look. You know, the look that moms give you to let you know you're in trouble. To let you know you've been caught. To let you know you're going to be dealt with later. Well, now it's my turn to catch two of you. Two of you to be my helpers. Two of you to be my assistants. Two of you to be my cheerleaders. Lonnie and Merle. You thought you were going to hide back here and get out of it, Merle and Lonnie? When I do something right, when I do something you like, what are you going to do when everybody else is going to clap? Not two, but three predictions. Three predictions using these three envelopes. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, of course, of course, the colors of the American flag. And I am so very, 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 did I say very? Yeah. Very thankful, thankful, thankful to be an American. I am. I don't have to look at too many other countries to see how great we have it here in the U.S. And I'm thankful. You know Oprah? Yeah. Of course you know Oprah. Everybody knows Oprah. Went free. Yeah. Oprah encourages us to be thankful. She says, be thankful for the things you have. And you will wind up with even more. She goes on to say that if you focus on the things that you don't have, or on the things that other people have, you will never, ever have enough. <laughs> Oprah encourages us to take a moment each day and write down the things that we have, the things that we're thankful for. Hang it up so that you can see it on a regular basis because if we do that, it can. And it will change our lives. Change our lives for the better. Oprah said you can restart your life today if you choose just by being thankful. You see, the more that you appreciate the things that you are, the things that you have, the more that life will give back to you. It's just the way it works. Now, as far as myself, I encourage people to lay there in bed just a moment longer. When you wake up, lay there just a moment longer and think to yourself, what am I thankful for in life? What am I thankful for today? Well, I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful to be alive here in the United States with each and every one of you. So thank you for allowing Jean and I to come and spend the next hour with you so that we can celebrate life together and have some fun in a process. So are you ready? Are you ready? Sid, I'll start with you. I've got a white envelope. Inside of the white envelope are four kings. King of hearts, king of diamonds, king of spades, king of clubs. I just want you to think of one. Don't tell anybody. Are you thinking of one? Okay, don't forget it. Don't change it. You got it? Okay, good. Now, I need two people, uh, Doris and Maggie. Would you like to help me? I've got two envelopes, one red, one blue. What I want you to do is one of you think of red, one of you think of blue. So talk it over real quick. Not too hard, okay. You got it? Good. Now, Maggie, inside of each envelope are the king of diamonds, king of hearts, king of spades, king of clubs. King of hearts, king of diamonds, king of spades, king of clubs. Just think of one of the four kings. You got one? Don't change it. Now, I want you to think, Doris, I want you to think of one of the opposite color. Oh, wait a minute, you can't do that unless she tells you what color hers is. <laughs> so you tell her what color your king is, and you pick a king of the opposite color. <laughs> Have you done that? Good. Both of you have a can. Now, my part. A little bit hard. Sid, I'm going to start with your can. I'm going to take it out, just like that, and turn it over and slide it back right so it, upside down. So your card is the only one going the opposite way. Your two cards, I'm going to turn them out, out, pull them, and turn them over. 
but watch what I do. I'm going to put your king in her envelope and your king in her envelope. Did you see that? Okay, for the first time. Sid, what king were you thinking of? Clubs. King of clubs? One king going the opposite way is the king of clubs. Okay. Not bad. Let's see what, how we do on the second one. What color were you thinking of, Megan? The envelope. Red or blue? Red or blue? Red. And what king were you thinking of? Hearts. The king of hearts. Get your clappers ready just in case. <laughs> One card going the opposite way is the king of So you must have been thinking of the other envelope. You must have been thinking of a black king. Were you thinking of the king of clubs or king of spades? King of clubs. King of clubs. One king. Let's see. Get your clappers ready just in case. One king going the opposite way. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Kings at all. 
but just twos. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Were you sending me your good thoughts? Or was I sending you mine? No, I think you were sending me your good thoughts. And sending good thoughts is not always easy to do, especially if you're in pain, especially if it's emotional pain, especially if it's deep emotional pain. I know, I've been there for the last four years. And I know that each and every one of you, you've experienced deep emotional pain at some point or another in your life. It's just part of life. For the last four years, I found myself waking up in the middle of the night thinking about those emotional pains. Playing and replaying and replaying and playing and playing and replaying them over and over and over again. So eventually I would get up and go to the other room and turn the TV on and start watching old reruns to get distracted. Reruns like Perry Mason. Did you ever watch Perry Mason? <laughs> How about Bonanza? Yeah. yeah. Wayne Train? Yeah. Outer Limits? Maybe. <laughs> I even watched Andy Griffith. <laughs> but watching all of that didn't get me much sleep. And it sure wasn't doing much to help solve the emotional pain. So what I did was turn a station and started watching something that did help. I started watching two different women. One you may have guessed, Oprah Winfrey, who encourages us to be thankful for the things that we still have left in life. And the other woman is a woman by the name of Louise Hay. Now I've been told she kind of reminds people of Diana Shore. But her name is Louise Hay, H-A-Y. She encourages people to use mind over matter, to keep your mind on good, positive things and take your mind off of those negative things that really don't matter. So for the remaining time that I'm here, you will hear me focus on being kind to one another, respecting one another, being thankful for the things that you have, and keeping your mind on good, positive things, on exciting things, on fun thoughts. Are you ready to have some more fun? Yeah. Well, here's the fun thought. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle that you can share with your friends who are not here tonight. Inside of my hand, can you hear it, Gene? Yeah, you can hear it. Inside of my hand, I have two coins, two US American coins. When I add them together, it comes up to 30 cents. But one one's not a quarter. Ooh, wait a minute, well, it is a puzzle. Two US American coins, add them together, it comes up to 30 cents, and one of them's not a quarter. Well, the answer, here's the answer to, answer to the puzzle. One of them is a nickel, and one of them is a quarter. She's over here saying, wait a minute, Paul. <laughs> wait a minute, Mr. Ketterer. You just said one of them was not a quarter. Well, that's absolutely true. One of them is not a quarter. You see that nickel? That's the one that's not a quarter. <laughs> I know, I know, as John Matt or Reese would say, that kind of stinks. But let me tell you what else stinks. It's the interest rate that we've been getting on our savings account for the last eight or nine years. I got my statement the other day, and it read, point zero 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 one percent I got 25 cents in interest. Now, doesn't that stink? You know what I don't understand? When people rob banks, they go to jail. Rightfully so. And yet when banks rob people, they get bonuses and promotions. <laughs> Normally at this time, I use this quarter to do a demonstration in telekinesis. Telekinesis is the act of moving an object like this quarter with just a thought. But I can tell with an audience of this size, it might be a little difficult to see. So with your permission, we'll use something bigger. I always bring a couple objects that are a little bit bigger. We'll use this box. Oops, there's already a quarter in there. So I've got two quarters. Can everybody see this box? Yes. Uh, a few in the back are stretching. Always bring something just a little bit bigger, just in case. So with your permission, we'll use something even bigger. We'll use this whole table. 
we use this table in a demonstration of telekinesis. But if I use something this big, I need the help of every single one of you. And in particular, I need the help of oh, Jack. Jack, would you come up here? Can you come up here? Sure. OK. I think. OK, let's give Jack a big hand. Give him some. <laughs> Stand right where I'm standing. Okay, stand right there, please. Okay. And what I want the rest of you to do is to help me by clearing your thoughts of any, clearly clear your minds of any negative thoughts. Negative, negative thoughts never do anyone any good. They just stand in your way from getting something done. So if you've got any negative thoughts in your mind, clear them out. And the best way to get rid of negative thoughts is to fill your mind with beautiful thoughts. And hopefully, inside of your 401k memory banks, you have many, many beautiful thoughts. So grab one of them and hold on to them for the next two, three minutes. You can do that. Now, I'm going to focus on a table. But Jack, in a minute, I want you to help me. And you see these two tassels? When I tell you to, not yet, but when I tell you to, I just want you to hold on to them. Okay. Because if this table moves this way or this way, or even if it floats up in the air, okay. I'm going to let go of it. Okay. You'll be holding those tassels, and I don't want it to hit the ceiling. Okay. You're pretty tall, so maybe I should. <laughs> <laughs> don't bump your head on this. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Jack, go ahead and pick up those two tassels. Hold them gently, not too tight. Just hold them just like that. Very good. I'm going to let go of the table. I'm going to look inside of the box while you hold on to the tassels. Yes, the points are still in there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Jack, you're doing a great job. So think you can bring it in for landing? Sure. Okay, bring it in. Jack, you did a great job. Give Jack a big hand. Thank you, Jack. Now, some people say telekinesis. <laughs> others say slide of hand. And yet others say, oh, that was just an illusion. But I like to compare it to what I call telefriend. You see, telekinesis is the act of moving an object, such as this table, with just a thought. But telefriend is the act of moving a thought from inside of our head to inside of the head of a friend by telling them kind and encouraging words. You see, when you tell somebody kind and encouraging words, you're actually sending out blessings of joy and happiness. And, and the best part, Whatever you send out comes back. So if you're sending out blessings of joy and happiness, guess what comes back? Blessings of joy and happiness, and sometimes even tenfold. And isn't that a heck of a return? Sure beats what the banks are giving us, doesn't it? Yeah. Here's one last tip about money. You know the best way to make somebody remember you? is to borrow money from them. <laughs> they will never forget you if you've got their money. You know the best way to save money? Is to forget who you borrowed it from. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you. Thank you. I'm just teasing you. But here's something I'm very serious about. God may have given us our faces, but each and every one of us, we choose the expression we put on our face. Every hour, every minute, every second of the day, we choose the expression we put on our face. So put on that smile. Put on that best face you will because we are going to see one striking 
illusion. And I do mean striking. You know when you send out those blessings of joy and happiness? Sometimes, on occasion, sometimes they might meet a wall. A wall of resistance. Maybe it's a person having a bad day. Oh, I'm sorry, bad time, maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's a person having a bad day. Maybe. Maybe it's a person who was just plain cantankerous. <laughs> maybe. But I believe that if you keep sending out those blessings of joy and happiness, sooner or later, you will get through. Get through just like this sharpie through this piece of paper. Oh no, that's not the magic. Anybody can take a sharpie and poke it through a piece of paper. Anybody can think good thoughts. Anybody can say encouraging words. The magic comes in a power of those kind and encouraging words. Sometimes all it takes is a smile. All it takes is a kind word to somebody to help lift them up, help restore them. I've seen it time and time again. Just a calm, simple gesture that will lift somebody up and restore them. Restore them back to the way they once were. Restore them back to the way God made them to be. Restore them back to the way God wants them to be. A simple, kind word can restore them. Actually, restore them, oh, just like this paper, now fully restored. Pass that around, Maxine. <laughs> so be kind to one another. Respect one another. Help be kind with each and every one of you and with your good thoughts. And remember this, everyone here is a blessing. Everyone's doing the very best that they can with what they have. They are. You see, everyone in this room is a blessing. They are. In fact, everyone in a city and everyone in a county, they're a blessing as well. And believe it or not, everyone in the state, everyone in the country, even the crazy, obnoxious politicians, whether it's on the left or whether it's on the right, they're a blessing. You see, some bless the room when they come in, and some bless the room when they go out. So remember this. Remember this. Keep a smile on your face, kindness in your heart, and good thoughts on your mind so that you can be a blessing when you come into the room. And isn't that worth remembering? Yeah. Speaking of remembering, that reminds me of my favorite story. It's a story about an elderly couple. They were getting up in years and they were getting a little bit forgetful. Concerned, they got a little scared, so they went to the doctor and the doctor ran a whole battery of tests. And finally the doctor came out and he says, look, he says, all the tests came out positive, everything looks good, but you are getting a little bit older, and with that, sometimes you do get a little forgetful. So he says, I just recommend you go home and enjoy life and write the important things down so to help you remember. With that, the husband and wife are sitting there watching TV that night. And finally the husband looks over at the wife and he says, you know, I've been thinking about that vanilla ice cream in the freezer for the last 15 minutes. I think I'm going to go out and have some. Would you like some? And she said, I have been thinking about the chocolate ice cream for the last 15 minutes. I would love some chocolate ice cream. So he starts to get go out. She said, aren't you going to write it down? And the husband says, the doctor said just write down the important things. And she said, that chocolate ice cream is important to me. So he goes out. And a few minutes later, she hears the pots and pans. And about 10, 15 minutes later, here he comes, carrying a tray. And instead of ice cream, he's got bacon and eggs. <laughs> and she says, I knew it. I knew you should have wrote it down. I knew you were going to forget. You forgot the toast. <laughs> As I get older, I find myself writing things down as well, just like the doctor prescribed. And what better time than right now to write down something important? Ah, another prediction. I've got some cards here, and you can see that they're all different. I'm going to have, Lonnie, you haven't helped me yet, have you? Okay, well you've been my clapper. We've got a bunch of different cards here. Now, Lonnie, I'm going to show you these cards, and what I want you to do is just think of one. It doesn't matter which one, think of whichever one that you want. Okay, you got one? Okay. You got one? Shake your head if that means yes. Okay, you got one? Okay. Don't change it. Okay. Send me your good thoughts. Don't change it.
Okay, I've got my prediction right here. I'm going to take, hold it once, hold it twice. Ken, would you do me a favor and just hold that, Ken? And Carol, will you keep an eye on him, okay? Okay. Lonnie, what card are you thinking of? Queen of Diamonds. Okay. Queen of Diamonds. In a nice, loud, clear voice, can you tell, open that up? And read, read what it says? Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Were you sending me your good thoughts? Notice I said good thoughts? That's because I only accept good thoughts. Life is too short to be dealing with negative thoughts. Life is a precious gift and we're moving right through it very quickly. Life is too short to be dealing with negative thoughts. Negative thoughts like lies, secrets, gossip, those type of negative thoughts destroy relationships. They destroy friendships. They destroy families. And I've seen it time and time again. In fact, that reminds me of my favorite story. It's a story about, it's a Native American story. It's a story about a grand old Indian chief. He was Cherokee. One evening, he was sitting around the campfire with just his grandson. So it's the Cherokee chief and the grandson. And he looks down at the boy and he says, Son, inside of every one of us, there's a battle going on. Now when he said every one of us, he meant everyone in this room. No exceptions. No exceptions. He meant everyone that ever was. No exceptions. No exceptions. He meant everyone that ever will be. No exceptions. He looks down at the boy and he says, Son, inside of every one of us, there's a battle going on between two wolves. Now one wolf lives by negative emotions. Negative emotions like sorrow, regret, loneliness. Negative feelings like the loss of dignity, the loss of usefulness, the loss of respect. The loss of connectivity. Connectivity between us and other people. Connectivity between us and friends. Connectivity between us and family or even loved ones. The other wolf, he says, lives by positive emotions. Positive emotions like generosity, compassion, sympathy, faith, hope, dignity, respect. But most importantly, love and gratitude. The little boy sits there and thinks for a minute and then looks up at this big Indian chief and he says, Grandpa, which wolf wins? And the wise old chief looked down at the boy and he says, whichever one you feed, whichever one you feed, whichever one you feed, so my friends, don't feed the wrong wolf. Not for an hour, not for a minute, not even for a second, because every second, every minute, every hour, you feed the wrong wolf, you are robbing yourself. You are robbing yourself of the joy and the happiness that you so richly want and deserve. And deserve. <clears throat> so if you want to be happy, just keep feeding the right wolf. Speaking about being happy, that reminds me of my favorite story. It's about, uh, in fact, it was in a newspaper, it was in Milford, I think it was, it was a couple celebrating 58 years of a happy marriage. It was in a paper, you might have read it. The newspaper reporter went to interview the husband, he says, what's your secret to 58 years of a happy marriage? And the husband said, well, that's easy, on our 25th wedding anniversary, we both got on a plane, we both flew to China, and we had a great time. We sang, we danced, we lived it up, and experienced the Chinese culture. It was great. And then there was a pause. And then there was a little silence. And finally, the newspaper reporter says, well, is that all? And the husband says, oh, no, no, no. On our 50th wedding anniversary, I got on a plane, 
I flew to China and brought her back home. <laughs> China. That reminds me of David Copperfield. You know, the magician that was too busy to come here tonight. <laughs> Many years ago, 10, 15 years, if it seems like 10, it must be 20, but maybe 15 years ago, you may remember David Copperfield doing a TV special where he created the illusion of walking through the Great Wall of China. Very good illusion. And I thought to myself, wouldn't that be cool to do that for you tonight? But, you know, getting the Great Wall of China from way over there to here is not so easy. So then I thought, well, maybe we could just build a wall. And I'm thinking, no, that may not be the right thing to do right now anyway. So what we'll do is we'll recreate that illusion using a couple different props. And those props are actually three cars, three big cars. Two of them are blue, and one of them are red. We'll let all three of them are jokers. We'll let the red one represent David Copperfield. We'll let the two blue ones represent the Great Wall of China. Now watch closely. As you can see, David Copperfield is in the back, right? You can see him all the way in the back. See him smiling right at you? He's got a big smile on his face. Everybody says, I can't see that smile. Now watch closely. If you blink, You'll miss it. Watch. I told you you would miss it if you did. Wow. So fast and yet so slow. So slow and yet so fast. Let's try that again. We'll put David back here in the middle of the Great Wall of China. Here. Did everybody see David in the middle? Now we'll find out if he jumps to the front or he jumps to the back. Now watch close. You know it's going to happen quick. He's still in the middle. He's still in the middle. Let me see if everybody can see. Watch close. Oh, did you see that? Wow. That's now he's nice. nice. <laughs> Thank you. So fast and yet so slow. So slow and yet so fast. Isn't that the way time is? Isn't that the way the aging process is so fast? The days go by so slow, the years go by so fast. Where have they all gone? Well, that reminds me, I did a show at uh, Highland Springs in Fort Thomas, Kentucky a couple years ago. There was a woman there by the name of Alice. Uh, she was a mother of five, grandmother of ten, great-grandmother of ten, something like that. A wonderful mother, very dedicated. She dedicated her life to her family. But the funny thing about it, she was 87 at the time, and I was 61, and she thought I was young. It's all relative. Now, my kids, on the other hand, they think I'm old and have one foot in the grave. In fairness to them, in dog years, I would have been dead 30 years ago. But all in all, it's not too bad when I roll out of bed in the morning. It's getting up off the floor that's tough. <laughs> Let me tell you what else is tough. Sometimes it's tough to believe that our mind does not always tell us the truth. Oh, we think it does. We're convinced it does, but it doesn't. Sometimes our mind tricks us, especially when we have negative thoughts on our mind, especially if they're big negative thoughts like revenge, resentment, jealousy, greed, even hatred. And I'm sorry to say there seems to be a lot of that now. But with those type of negative thoughts, they will put us into a spiraling nosedive to emotional disaster. And when we're in that nosedive, we've got to be very careful because that's the time our, our mind will trick us. Trick us to see and an illusion is reality. Trick us to see reality is an illusion. When we're in that spiraling nosedive, we don't have a clue as to what's real and what's not. So the quicker we can get those negative thoughts off of our minds, the quicker we can put our life back into balance so that we can enjoy a big, big and wonderful life that we were meant to have. So what better time than now to use the positive power of our life to do something incredible, something unbelievable, something that would defy all odds. In fact, the people in Las Vegas cannot even begin to explain 
this. For this, I'm going to need two people. And I'm going to have, she, where she, let's see, there was two hues. There's one hue, and there's the other hue. We both have the hues come up here. Hue <laughs> one and hue two. <laughs> Good. Hugh, would you stand right there for me? Stand right here. Right here. And Hugh number two, or one, you can always stand right next to him over here. Number one. You're number one? <laughs> okay. Now that's a true gentleman, isn't it? Okay. Now I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to start off. <coughs> Number two, yes. take that and just put it somewhere where you think is in the middle of the deck. Just try to find the middle. Slide it in. in that's pretty near the bottom. I know. So <laughs> near the middle. It doesn't matter exactly. Just try to find the middle. Anywhere you want. It's, there's nothing tricky about this, but you put it anywhere you want in the middle. Okay. That's pretty close. Now we're just going to mark it. Now, all I want you to do is tell me if it's red or black. It's red. Red. Okay. Now what's your number? Tell me if it's red or black. Oh, you thought you were going to get to see it. <laughs> it's a lot easier when you can see it, but it's a lot more difficult when you can't. Hugh, tell me if you think it's red or black. I think it's red. Red. What do you think? Fast. Black. What do you think? Black. Okay. Then you got the routine. Now let's go through these fast. Red. Okay. Keep me honest. Black. Okay, fast. Black. Okay. Red. You're black. Black? Red. Okay. Red. Red. Fast? Black. <laughs> You're thinking too long. Okay. Blue. Blue! <laughs> There's blood in every crowd. <laughs> okay. Okay. Red. Okay. Black. Black. Good. Red. Black. Red. Red, black, 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 red, black. Okay, here's your card. That, that's the one. I'm going to just take and slide this over and change places. And we'll continue right where we left off. Okay, so I'm going to put the reds on the side. Go ahead. Red, black, black. Red, red, red. Good. Now you're getting the swing of it. Okay. Black, red, black. Okay, one of each. Okay, you said black. Okay, come. Another black. Red, black. Okay. Red, black. Oh, oh wait a minute. Put another one. Cool. We either one. Just jump it. Red. We're getting down to the bottom. Black. Okay. Red, black, black, red. Okay, two left. You do this one. Oh, red. Okay, and black. Okay. Wow. Oh. That was a lot of work. <laughs> well, let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> let's find out how well they did. Now you saw the first one, so we know we at least have one right. Well. It looks like, my friends, you got all of the red ones correct in this stack. Whoa. Wow! It looks like you got all of the black ones correct in this stack. Wow! How can you do that? Good. Because I can do it. Just because you can do it! That's excellent. Now... You didn't get judged. Not judge? Well, that's the trick, I guess. Man, you got the advantage. Let's find out how well we did on the other side. All of the black ones seem to be there. 100% of the black. Now let's check the, oh wait a minute. Wait a minute, one card. One black card out of place. And it looks like the three of clubs. So you got 49 out of 50 correct. Wait a minute. You 
see, I made a prediction. I always thought how many you thought might get right. Would you do me a favor, slide off, in fact, read in a nice loud voice what I thought, how many you were going to get correct? Four, 49. 49! 49. Yeah. I knew, I'm not sure which one got the three of clubs wrong, but I thought to myself, if they got one wrong, I wondered what it would be. I thought it might be the three of clubs. Favorite story. It's a story about three, three elderly sisters. One was 90, one was 92, and one was 94. Well, the 94 year old sister goes up the steps into the bedroom, into the bathroom. She takes one step into the shower and gets a little bit confused. So she calls down to this 92 year old sister. She says, I can't remember if I'm getting into the shower or getting out. <laughs> and the 92-year-old sister says, I'll come up and help you. So she goes up the steps, gets halfway up the steps, and she gets a little bit confused. So she calls down to the 90-year-old sister. And she says, I need some help. I can't remember if I'm going up the steps or down the steps. <laughs> and the 90-year-old sister says to herself, I'm so glad that I'm not old, like my sisters. I'm so glad that I'm not senile, like my sisters. Knock on wood. So she calls to the sister on a step. She says, I'll be there to help you as soon as I find out who's at the door. <laughs> Positive emotions or the wolf of negative emotions? The truth of the matter is, both of them are knocking. Both of them are always knocking. The real question is, which one are you going to let in? And what better time now than to let in the positive wolf with three more predictions? Very difficult predictions, I might add. Jane, Janie. Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a genie, there's a Jenny, there's a Janie. <laughs> Jane over here. This is Janie, right? Yes. Janie, would you help me with this? All I want you to do is think back to your childhood, okay? And I want you to think of your favorite toy, okay? You got it? I'm going to try to guess what you're thinking of. Now, I want you to think of your toy. I want you to think of the color of that toy. Don't tell anybody. Nobody knows what you're thinking. Okay, you're thinking of a toy and you're thinking of the color of it, right? Is that true? Shaking, is that a yes? Yep. Oh, are you having trouble hearing? Yes. I am so sorry. Would, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, just think of a toy. Okay, and think of the color of that toy. Okay. Send me good thoughts. Okay, I'm going to put your, my prediction right here. Okay, there's what I predicted. What toy were you thinking of? What toy were you thinking yeah, of? Yeah, I'm not That's seeing okay. you look at my green lips sort of. A um, teddy bear. A teddy bear. What color was it? Brown. Brown teddy bear. <sighs> Would you be happy if I got two of the three? <laughs> Well, let's make this just a tad bit easier. Lucy, what I want you to do is think of a state. Any state that you may not have gone to and one that you may have always wanted to go. Are you thinking of a state? Don't change it now. Think of it. Okay. Jean, keep an eye on these predictions. I've got my prediction laying right up here. Jean's keeping an eye on it. What state are you thinking of? Wisconsin. <laughs> I told you these were tough. <laughs> wow. Would you be happy if I got one of the three predictions right? In fact, I'm going to make the third prediction right now. It's a famous person. I'm going to predict a famous person. 
The last time I did this, somebody thought of a famous person that nobody in the whole room knew. <laughs> so I went out on the internet, and I keyed in famous people, and I wrote them down. You can look at what Taylor Swift, Elvis Presley, Dick Clark, Paul McCartney, Bill Clinton, Jennifer Lopez, Tom Hanks, Oprah Winfrey, Tom Cruise, Bill Gates, Robin Williams, Beyonce. You recognize these names, don't you? Yeah. Okay, Bob Dylan, Britney Spears, Angelique Jolie, Woody Allen, etc., etc., etc. We've got about 30. In fact, Jan and Charlotte. What I want you to do, Jan, is work with Charlotte. Charlotte's just going to look over your shoulder. Jan, I want you just to pick any one of these at random. Okay? Don't go through and pick out your favorite one. I want you just to go like this. Just go and find it somewhere in the middle and peek at it and let Charlotte see it as well. Hold out your left hand. Okay? Put your right hand on top and, and put your thumb in the middle somewhere. Here. Just put your middle right down here. Pull it up anywhere you want, anywhere you want, and show Charlotte. Okay? You got it? Good. Now don't forget that. Let's see how well we did. Can I pick these up and show everybody? Can I pick these up and show everybody? Okay. Who was the first one? It was um, Jane. 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 You thought of a toy. You thought of a brown teddy bear. Well, I thought of a brown teddy bear. <laughs> Lucy thought of a state, Wisconsin. I'm close. Actually, pretty close. You see, you thought of Wisconsin, and I thought of Wisconsin. <laughs> Selected a name. What name were you selected? Did you select? What name did you select? Bill Gates. Bill Gates? No. I wrote down Bill Gates. <laughs> were you sending me your good thoughts? Notice I said good thoughts because when you have good thoughts, you tend to be happy. And when you're happy, you feel better. You sleep better. Life in general is better. In fact, remember Alice from Highland Springs? She said the trick to life is to live a long, <laughs> long, 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 happy life without growing older. But the problem is, as I get older, sometimes I feel more and more invisible. I went to Kroger's the other day, I thought I was going to get run over by a fast car. I'm standing there and people are walking by this way and that way and it was like nobody even saw me. I, sometimes I feel invisible. As I get older, sometimes I feel less and less relevant. Technology's passing me by, all these apps and gadgets and everything else. It's hard to keep up. I turn the TV on, I don't recognize any of the actors or actresses on TV. I turn the radio on and say, oh wow, what is this? You know. It, when I feel, and sometimes I feel like I don't even have a voice with my own daughters. But when I feel that way, I know the best place for me to be is in church. So that I can thank God for the things that I still do have in my life. In fact, I was in church the other day and Pastor Ben came out. And he said, we're working on our financial obligation and we're only $350 short. So if anybody pledges $350 today, we'll let them pick out the next three hymns in today's service. With that, a small little hand goes up. She has silver, maybe with white hair. I'm going to make up a name. I think it was Mrs. Smith or something like that. She says, oh, Pastor Ben. Pastor Ben, I'll do that. Pastor Ben says, that's great. That's great, uh, Mrs. Smith. She, she says, what three hymns would you like in today's service? So she stands up looks over the congregation and smiles real big and she says, I'll pick him! I'll pick him! And oh my, I will pick him! <laughs> for this next and final, for this next and final illusion, if you would, 
I don't need three hymns, but what I do need are three pieces of rope. A short one, a medium-sized one, and a very, very long one. Now watch, what I'll do is bring up the ends of the rope so that all of the ends are the same length. But the middles, the middles are not. Not unless I spray. How's that for sound effects? <laughs> A little magic sizing on them. And watch what we have here. Whoop. Oh my gosh. Let's try this again. The magic sizing didn't work. We have a short one, a medium one, and a very long one. We'll bring up the ends just like this. Just like this. Spray it again. Maybe the sound effects. Maybe if you work with me, you'll. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Actually, I wasn't trying to spray it. I wasn't trying to spray I was just trying to get you down there. Okay, well, watch what happens though. Wait a minute. The same. Oh, we have one, two, and three ropes all the same size. Let's try that again. A very short, a medium, and a very long one. Again, we'll bring up the ropes just like that, bring up the ends. One, two, three, just like that, and I love that sound effect. <laughs> and pull them apart. We now have one, we have two, and three ropes all the same size again. Thank you. Now what we'll do is we'll tie these two ropes together in the middle with a knot. Just like that. Now the only way you can get rid of a knot in the middle of two pieces of rope is by magic. Oh. <laughs> the magic of mind over matter. And what's on your mind? It does matter. What matters to you, doesn't it? Of course it does. And it matters to the people around you because they want you to be a blessing when you come into the room. And it matters to your God. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't. You still have a purpose in life. You wouldn't be here in this room tonight if you didn't still have a purpose. Maybe it's as simple as helping one another, being kind to one another, respecting one another building bridges and inroads. Maybe. Maybe it's as simple as putting a smile on somebody else's face today to tell them a kind and encouraging word and look them up and heal them. And putting a smile on somebody else's face today. Maybe. Or better yet, maybe it's to put that best expression we own, to put a smile on our face today. Maybe to give somebody else the joy and the pleasure of putting a smile on our face today. Maybe. So in conclusion, as we do grow older, it's not unusual to lose more and more of those precious things in life that at one time used to give us some form of happiness. You know, those things that we probably took for granted when we were a little bit younger. But we still have so much to be thankful for. We don't have to look too far to see people with bigger and more difficult challenges than we have. Yeah, growing older can be a little tough. But the truth of the matter is, life at any age can be tough. But I'm here to tell you it's not too late. It's never too late to be happy. But you have to think happy thoughts. You have to think good thoughts, fun thoughts, exciting thoughts. You cannot let your mind control you with negative thoughts. Yes, mind over matter. Keep your mind where it belongs. Keep your mind on the right stuff. Keep your mind on the good stuff. Fill your mind with beautiful, beautiful memories because 
You deserve to be happy. Everyone here does. I'm confident that each and every one of us, we were meant to be happy. After all, aren't we all children of God? And what good parent doesn't want their children to be happy? I know it's not always easy. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's very hard. But it's up to you, and it's up to me. I can't do it for you, and you can't do it for me. Only you can keep your mind on the good things, the positive things, the right things. Only you can remain grateful for the things that you still have, even if sometimes everything else around us seems lost. Mind over matter, illusion or reality. As you decide, I'd like to share one final thought with you. The real magic in life, the real, the real magic in life, the real magic in life is love. It's love is love. And when you share that love with one another, along with kindness and respect, especially kindness and respect, then you have become the greatest magician, <laughs> second to none. So remember, wherever life takes you, whether it's just down Highway 28 or around the world, may love, respect, kindness, and the amazing magical power of gratitude always be in your hearts. Thank you, God bless, and lots of love to all of you. I'm going to try this. There's a couple came in, so I know I didn't know them. But is it Ken, Carol, Beth, Bob, John, Shirley, Jean, Martha, Doris, Maggie, Arlena, or some Arla, Isla, Isla some of those groups. Um, Lonnie, Maxine, Betty, Dorothy, Jack, Sid number one. Well, actually, it's SID. Is it SID? Yes. Okay, Sid. And I did meet you. What was your name, hon? B. B, it hasn't changed. Good. I haven't done that too. Lucy, Jenny, J Jane. Sid and Peter, Rio, Rihanna, Q, number two, a very good gentleman. The gentleman came in, I didn't catch your name. There's uh, JN, Charlotte, TD, Q, number one, MIG. Thank you all.